interview and job search strategies that work. On in this podcast, I want to talk about um, salary, uh, hourly rate, salary, whatnot, and the approach to use when talking to potential employer on, you know, here's what I want, right? I mean, of course, you want to say I want everything, right? I want as much money as possible, because if you don't if, if you don't specify that, uh, they're going to give you whatever they think that you're worth, right? But you have to be really you have to really know uh, what the marketplace says, the salary. Salary.com is a good website. Uh, but here's a couple things you can say uh, when they push you on, um, you know, salary. So something like um, if, you know, employers like, hey, um, you know, let's talk about your kind of salary you're looking for, right, whatnot. And if you don't want to talk about it because you don't, you don't want to put your cards out there too early, what you could probably say is something is like, um, you know, um, it, unless you guys um, want to hire me, or maybe better yet, you know, um, un- until we've decided until you've decided that you want to hire me, and um, and and I've decided that I can help you uh, achieve your goals as a company. I think it's premature that we talk. I, th- I think it's. Uh, I think. I think. Talking about salary is premature at this case, at this time. I'm I've been in some interviews as well where, um, right off the get go, uh, a couple of questions in like, so what what type of salary are you looking for, right? Uh, basically, you know, it's like, oh, okay, all right, well, you know, um, it, that tells me like, hey, they already have a lot of, uh, they're like. They're thinking, oh, I, I, I have a bunch of recruiter. I have a bunch of um, candidates, so I can just be picky, basically, right? So employers are like that. They're, they're picky. Um, so you know, maybe my response would be something like, um, you know, um, can you tell me more about the job, right? That way, I don't commit. You don't want to say it that way, I don't commit, but you can tell them like, what? Uh, can you tell me more about the about the job? You know, sometimes. Um, sometimes they're very upfront about it. Sometimes they're very like kind of, um, uh, to the point where it's like, Hey, tell me what you want, you know? And, uh, this is where you should know what your range is, right? Your salary range. I know people say don't have a salary range, right? Have the definite hourly amount, right? Whatever. But, you know, I, I say a salary range myself, right? So the low end is like what you could, uh, your low end should be the high, by the way, so, you know, for instance, like you want to make like $20,000 a year, whatever, right? Let's just say, right? You you want to make that, right? So your range would be 20000 to 30000 right? Because you want to make, you want to make 20000 That's That's the top of your range, right? They don't know that, uh, but, you know, and if you just tell them 20 to 30, they could put you at 22 or they could go down to 20, which was what you wanted anyway, right? Or what you're willing to go to basically at the lowest amount. So that's just a little bit of um, what do they call it, uh, psychological uh, bidding or whatever it is, or playing the, the cat and mouse game basically with the uh, uh, companies. You know, because if you go in too low and you start working there, you could really regret it later on because – you know, you got yourself into this job that you know you could, you know you wanted more, and so you now you had to adjust your, uh, your lifestyle a little bit be, to meet those, uh, to meet those salary requirements, right? So, uh, if you accepted fifteen thousand, right, but you really wanted twenty because you, you know, you have some um, bills or whatever that um, you already let's say you were already making eighteen thousand, but you needed a bump up pay to accommodate for other bills. So that twenty thousand would take care of it, but now you're back to fifteen, and um, yeah, d- don't don't accept that. Definitely, you know, if, if that's the case, know your number when you go in. So most employers know, um, they know the top end figure, or they know the top end dollar. What what the position pays for, right in the marketplace. Usually they know that, right? Um, their goal is to get you down to the che- cheapest possible, right? Um, that's what they want to do, basically bid bidding war basically or a bidding dilemma bidding bidding so something something to note right if the employer tells you a range 
right? A salary range. So uh, it's like this, um, 15 to $20 an hour, let's say, right? That's their range, right? What that means is um, the employer can, uh, can afford to pay you $20 an hour, um, but they, they want to try to get you f- at $15 an hour is what's going on there. And so like, you know, there, there's a good time when uh, to negotiate for that, right? And it's after they after you know they want you, you know, um, they want you to work for them, right? And you're like, you know, the cat's meow, basically, right? Now, okay, now you got that $20 an hour range or whatever their high end is, right? But, you know, if, if, you're, if 20 is not what you want, you want more, you should know your walk away point. You should know, okay, let me cut my losses, because uh, you didn't lose anything, you still have a job. You just don't have that job, right? And so you have to say to yourself, okay, I, I don't have this new job, and it paid me um, not what I wanted, but close and close. You know, you have to, but you're still making fifteen dollars an hour uh, at your current job, but you didn't get say twenty one dollars an hour. You only got twenty. Are you willing to you know be okay with that? Right. You have to kind of know that going in. I, th- I think it goes without saying is. Um, I had an interview, gosh, a number of years ago, and, you know, I was, I was real about it. I, I, they said, um, what do you, uh, what interests you about this job, right? And they said, the money. <laughs> I was being real, right? And I didn't get the job, oddly enough. Uh, but th- this was after I did the technical interview, right? It was for, like, a network job or whatever. Um, and the money was great. And... Then I said, um, um, I want, you know, it's because of the money. You know, I love this. I love, I want the money, right? And I don't know what it was, but they, I didn't get, I didn't get the job. And I think it was that, really. I, th- I really think it was that. Um, you know, but who doesn't want to make money, right? It's like some big game or whatever, some big secret that they, they want to talk about. But that's the reality of it. Everybody's working for money, plain and simple, no matter what, you know? Don't let anybody fool you, um, you know, unless they're working for free, right? Um, but most people, like 99% of the world, works for money. I don't think there's only, a, you know, a small percentage that actually work for free and actually love doing it. And I don't think it's considered work then if they do it and they love it, right? But, mo- yeah, most people do work, work, work stuff, they get paid, you know, and they want to get the most. Okay, the other thing is, like, um, um, if you know the hour, like, um, what I do is I do an Excel spreadsheet, right? And I have the hourly rate. And then I'll have, like, all the potential bills I have, right? And then the a potential tax. I'll factor in taxes. And then I'll calculate, okay, what's the, hour, you know, what's the yearly take-home, right, after taxes? And I'll do it for various amounts of um, salary. And then I'll do that for... Uh, different parts of the states, or, you know, every in every state, basically, every state I interview for. And basically, it's like this. Say, like, for instance, I'm in interviewing for a job in um, New York, right? Um, and the rate is whatever, right? Whatever it is an hour. So I'll have a factor in. That rate will be different than if I'm interviewing for a job in, say, Chicago or, or Nashville or... Um, Kansas City, Missouri, Missouri, um, or wherever, right? It'll be different. The taxes are different. The um, cost of living is different. So, I, so what I do is I, like I said, what I do is I have an Excel spreadsheet set up to where I put those numbers in based on the location, right? Because salary can't be, you know, a, a, a straight on like, okay, this is how much it is in every location. Doesn't That's not realistic. Because you need to earn more in different parts of the United States or parts of the world, basically, wherever it is you live, right? You know, um, commute time, if there's commute time, if it's work from home, um, that's why I'm so big on work from home. Because literally, you can, if you're full-time work from home, um, that's, a, that's a huge factor. Uh, no travel time, zero travel time, uh, your wake-up time, you know, the preparation to go to work. The, um, you know, shifting your schedule uh, for the family, basically. Your vacation. Your vacation when you work from home, you're remote, you can work anywhere. 
So basically, you can have, uh, if you set it up right, where you go to a hotel that has nice Wi-Fi or nice internet, uh, you can have a four-day weekend. You know, you can leave on a Thursday night. Yeah, like I said, so you can work. Uh, you can work Friday, uh, work from home. So, a couple different um, uh, websites to go to uh, if you want to learn about salary. Um, salary.com, that's a good one. Uh, myplan.com, um, and then salaryexpert.com. I'll have these actually in the show notes as well, right? Um, uh, so that you can you can go to them yourself, so that you have. Um, some tools that you can use to um, research salaries. Another thing you can do is go to Glassdoor. I'll put that in the show notes as well. So, for instance, you go to Glassdoor, and um, this is you doing research, basically. This is not the negotiating anymore, right, basically. This is you doing the research on the job. So you um, you go to Glassdoor. You find out what the job uh, does or you know, the, the, the salary of that job, right? Uh, you find somebody that makes that much, basically, right? Maybe you can talk to him or her and kind of get an idea of how much they make if you, if you know, if they, if they give that information to you. So if you know the person, let's say you're, um, you're a, um, uh, what do you call it, a systems administrator, right? So you have a junior systems administrator and you have a senior systems administrator, right? You're applying for the systems admin job, right? But you know what the you know what the junior sysadmin j- job makes. So that makes like twenty thousand, let's say, right? Just using numbers. That's not really what it makes, but let's just say for you know uh, numbers. So and then the senior sysadmin they make forty thousand dollars, right? So one would assume that you're going to make thirty thousand dollars a year. That would be your your high end, basically, right? So you know, just find someone who gets who's a lower level position and a higher position, and then you're in the middle there. And if you know, um, and then you can kind of factor in how much how much you're going to get. This is kind of a different way uh, to learn salaries, but but here it goes right. So typically, um, typically companies pay if they pay somebody a dollar, uh, right? The company has to pay a dollar forty because they have to do the insurance and all that, right? So whatever the profit margin is, of the company. Let's say it's you know, 30%, right? It's probably closer to like 60% really. So what happens a lot of times is this, the, um, the end customer or the person doing the, it like managed services, right? So company hires uh, another company to do work for them, IT work, right? So let's say it's Acme, right? Or let's say it's Walmart. Walmart hires Acme, right, to do IT work at Walmart, whatever. And Walmart pays Acme $2, right, to this work per hour, per, you know, per work, just to make it simple. What the company does then is pays the, and the um, employer $1 an hour, right? And their cost is $1.40 because they have to pay for uh, health insurance and taxes and all that for the, the employee. So their their um their their profit is sixty cents basically, because it had to pay out a dollar forty, and if you can find that out basically if you know, uh if there's a a contract for like say Walmart announces you know five billion you know I don't know a million dollar contract with Acme right, and you know how many employees there are there are hundred employees okay well all right let's see so you do the math on that, and you can kind of figure out what an employee probably makes per hour, probably, you know, you kind of know that. And um, I don't know that it's posted out there. I've never really seen it out there posted where what a company's profit margin is. They can have whatever they want, right? It's up to them. Uh, But I just say, you know, um, yeah, you know what? And actually, it wouldn't be 60% profit, actually. If if Walmart's giving Acme $2 an hour, uh, and they're paying, you know, somebody else a dollar, uh, and they have to pay out a dollar forty basically for them. You only get sixty cents profit. That's not sixty percent profit. That's like I don't forget how much percent it is, but it's not sixty percent, right? But that's just an idea of, of uh, of how a company would do that. And if you know that, and if you know all those little things inside there, like how much, how many people they have, 
Um, you know, if it's a company, a small company, 10 or 20 people, sometimes you got to ask yourself, okay, all right, okay, it's a company, it's got 10 people, you know, they have all this office space, right? Why do they have all this office space? Okay, obviously, they're making a lot of money, right, basically, because how can they afford the office space? You got to figure, you got to think, you got to think about that. So that probably means is, um, you know, the, the people working for the company, you know, getting good wage, getting a high wage. Uh, and then it's probably very, very profitable. They have a lot of customers that are, it's a very profitable company. Versus if it's, um, uh, if it's a, a work from home job and the company is work from home as well, um, probably, you know, probably not, it could be pro very profitable. They may just not have an office, right? And, um, but anyway, those are just things to think about when you, um, when you go in and, and try to research salaries. So let's say you got an offer letter. We're talking about negotiations, though, right? Say, say you got a, an offer letter and, um, you're like, no, I'm good. So what you can do is you say, like, based on my experience, I, I feel my salary, um, my, um, my my salary should be this or you know my skills warrant this much pay whatever right and you can send it back to him that's a rebuttal right uh for a uh for um salary rebuttal and if they say no thanks a lot bye it's you're, you're okay and the same token if you if they offer you um and that's you know whatever it is you can say i'm good no thank you you know maybe you send them a letter saying you know I'm going to have, sorry, I'm going to have to decline this offer based on blah, 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 just to save face, you know, whatever. Because what you probably don't know is um, when a company um, gets an offer letter to you, right, what happens is they already have money in the bank for that. Um, they've already allocated those funds, basically. So that's all profit for them, you know. They've already made the, the you know, made the distinction, the CIO or CTO, whoever it is. He's already made the distinction. Okay, I need this. I need this uh, person on board, and we're we're going ahead and we're gonna make sure we have enough funds. Three month usually it's three months salary usually uh, for that person coming on board, and so usually um, yeah that's that's how it works. And your ROI it, it varies from company to company, but usually it's like six months. So return on investment for the company, meaning like you've worked to the company six months, you you've now made the company profit after six months or however long they have it. It's like I said, it's different for company to company. So I'd like to thank everybody for listening to this podcast and uh, have a great day.